getting to spend lots of time in the lab and around other researchers and scientists and getting to interact with the Science Center staff in a way that we don't get to during the school year, it, it really makes you feel like a, like a real scientist. <laughs> the stuff that we're doing isn't kind of like manicured for this program, but is like actual research that um, is going to actually be published. I think that's like the biggest thing that like we've sort of realized. It's like, this is real research. It's not just a paper for a class that you're writing that nobody's gonna see. You know, hopefully there are some, you know, impacts in the field. So my project was energy flow diagrams where I like chart how energy flows within the ocean via like photosynthesis and respiration and kind of see how it was affected by like light conditions, temperature and nutrients available in that area. I think the process of making the poster really made it hit home that like we did research and that like I know this topic like semi better than like other people. And so I think it's a really cool way to get into research because it's less daunting, but at the end of the day, you still have like this project that you worked on that's like new and exciting. This summer, I worked for Celeste, which is the Wellesley branch of Harvard's Galileo project. And we work to create cheap and portable instruments to do a basically survey of the sky. It's all self-discipline, which I ended up really, really enjoying. And I think it made me a better scientist and also just better, a better student, a better person in the world. <laughs> I worked at the Civic AI Lab at Northeastern. And for my project, I worked on helping design AI-based tools to support underrepresented women in the gay economy. I wasn't aware of this kind of subfield of human-centered design and it works with real world problems and helps create solutions for them. I realize this is something I really, really like. In our lab, we use zebra finches as a model to study human language learning. I hope somebody's interest is piqued by our research and it makes them think about language learning in, in a new way. We're looking at perceptual differences between two vowels in Mandarin Chinese, but specifically how they're represented orthographically. I just hope that everyone else thinks that our research project is as cool and interesting as we find it. But I'm hoping that this will sort of inspire people to maybe think a little more closely about the way they talk, the way they write, the way their, their language is used every day. Our research examined the relationship between historical redlining and contemporary asthma rates. I hope that we're adding to a larger data set or that we're doing something here to talk about institutional racism. We're hopefully moving the needle. I'm refining a protocol using membrane inlet mass spectrometry, which helps us measure heavier noble gases such as xenon and krypton. Noble gases are inert, which means they're chemically inactive Active, and that means they're really good physical tracers of things that go on in the environment. There are such tiny little problems, or like not even tiny problems, these are like big problems, but we don't realize how they can be applied and how we can make changes at this level. But like we can make small work and make small steps towards uh -huh. these goals. And I think that's so cool. <laughs> there are people working out there on issues that are really interesting, really impactful. And the skills we learned here at Wellesley can be applicable. There's so much out there and we can definitely use our knowledge to better the world.